All right. Um, today we have a very special guest. We have Mike Fang, who is the co-founder of Hummingbot. And today he's going to be walking us through um, the bot, how to use it, and a couple of different strategies. So he's going to be focused on uh, market making and arbitrage strategies uh, using Hummingbots. And yeah, we, a lot of people have been asking about this topic. So I thought no better person to talk about this than Mike here. So hey, Mike, how's it going? Hi, Larry. How are, how are you? I'm doing pretty doing pretty well. So I'm uh, looking forward to uh, discussing this. So um, yeah. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about uh, your background? So from what I understand, you started in a traditional finance background, but for some reason you were drawn to the crypto space and specifically mm -hmm. uh, the bot space. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, so um, I, I, uh, I graduated college a long time ago in 2001. Uh, and uh, back then, you know, I followed like this herd of lemmings to Wall Street. Uh, you know, back then tech wasn't as big as it is now. Uh, but, uh, you know, even though I was there because I was, I was a computer nerd as a kid. I uh, did a lot of like, you know, structuring of like weird, complicated derivatives uh, called CDOs uh, back then, like the packaging mortgages and putting them into these like complicated instruments. Um, so I did that for nine years, actually. It was a long time uh, and kind of like rode through the 2008 financial crisis. Uh, you know, both up and down. And and at, at the end of it, I just got really disillusioned because I felt that I had like spent all my career like just, you know, making rich people richer, you know, and but not actually adding any real value uh, to society. In fact, probably subtracting from it, you know, by creating these like weapons of mass financial destruction, as they called it. Uh, so I was like, you know what, like, screw this. I'm, I'm, getting, out, I'm getting out of finance. So I uh, went and applied for a master's in engineering um, uh, in, in the Bay Area here at Stanford. Uh, and then, you know, like just left finance completely, got here and then decided to be an entrepreneur, you know, and just you know, I founded a, uh, like a, a startup that uh, like we were in the document analytics space. We're using computer vision to extract data from PDF files. Um, and then that, that was acquired by another PDF software company called Nitro. I was like a product manager there, you know, just and I thought I had like left finance completely behind. Uh, but then in 2017, you know, kind of started reading about like kind of these things called ICOs um, and then. I just kind of realized that like these like these kind of smart contracts were just like a better version of the kind of like you know like the vehicles and things we had created in finance. It was like just so much more efficient, uh, and so it's kind of fell down the rabbit hole, uh, and then end up um, starting a company that later created Hummingbot. Um, so so it's got together with a couple of friends of mine, uh, you know, like my friend Carlo from college, uh, my friend Martin worked at Apple. And all of us were like kind of passionate about crypto. And uh, yeah, we just created this company that initially we we're trying to create an on-chain hedge fund. Um, and then uh, unfortunately we had a, like, a, it's like a, I'll keep this part short, but we had like settled with SEC. It was like a crazy thing where the SEC thought we were doing some weird ICO thing. Uh, we weren't, but you know, they still wanted us to settle and close down our hedge fund at the time. So um, this is the end of 2018 uh, and we didn't know what to do. Uh, but we had built some pretty cool like you know, algorithms and and some you know technology in-house to uh, basically do our automated trading uh, and so we figured well you know we might as well just open source this you know out, out there uh people started using it uh and this is and then kind of like and then we were like you know we, we, why don't we officially open source it um and then try to create a tool that would allow people to um you know basically you know do do things you couldn't do before like kind of like run these more sophisticated uh, kind of algorithms like the, the ones we were trying to run, um, and copying like some of like the more like you know like all the advanced Wall Street hedge funds and and all the the top crypto hedge funds. And so so I, I think that one thing I led to another, and we kind of realized that because this tool wasn't just used by individuals, it also added a lot of value for like the exchanges themselves. And so we kind of realized that you could actually make this sustainable if you kind of like get exchanges to like sponsor it or like pay for it and then just increase the number of users uh, on their side. Um, so, so one thing led to another, uh, and then we eventually raised a series A round from, from initialized capital to like kind of continue building our community to get building on the project. And so, so today um, we're actually like a total, we're like two, two different entities. Uh, there's like a for-profit company that uses Hummingbot to uh, trade and provide services to like market making services to customers. Um, and then and then we have an open source side, which is housed in a uh, foundation uh, governed by people who own the HBOT token. 
uh, and, and then also sustained by exchange fee share partnerships. Um, so it's kind of like, I would say it's, it's kind of a weird amalgam of like, you know, kind of business models, I guess, so to speak. Um, but uh, I think that, um, yeah, we, we, kind of, we kind of found a way to make it work. So combined, there's like 50 people across the two entities, uh, 40 on the for-profit side, 10 on the open source side. Cool. And so, yeah, can you start talking a little bit about how this bot compares to um, yeah. other bots that are out there? So recently I've been covering a bunch of different uh, custom bots like hand rolling your own and a couple yeah, of yeah. open source ones like Freck Trade, Jesse Trade and so forth. And yeah. their strategies, as I understand them, are a little bit different than what you focus on. You focus on market making. So you can, can you talk a little bit about what makes Hummingbot different than these other uh, sure. approaches? Sure, sure. So, so first of all, we actually uh, we're a big fan of open source in general. So uh, to us, uh, we actually know that the folks at CCXT, um, you know, and uh, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've saw that uh, I saw the Jesse Trade video you, you did as well. And so in general, what we think that open source really does give people the, the kind of the ability to understand what's going on in the code and to really you know, customize it. Um, but the, 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 uh, I see kind of our open source bots, our real competition are the bots that kind of like the exchanges built into the interface or uh, kind of more like the retail focused bots like three commas or bits gap where you're kind of running something online, but you're running something that's like, you, you don't understand how to, you can't really see how the code works. It's a black box. And a lot of times like, you know, you, you have to expose your keys to some third party. Uh, so, so, so to me, uh, I would say open source in general is something that we want to support. Uh, and in the future, we actually might even integrate into CCXT. Uh, but, but I would say from the beginning, we've always focused on a type of trading called market making. Um, and that kind of stems uh, in part uh, from really two sources. The fact, the first is because I spent a lot of time in finance and I, I feel like I, I, I see that one of the things that makes crypto unique is a, is the ability for people in crypto to actually do market making. Um, because in traditional finance, um, exchanges were actually kind of like, they basically limit who can actually get access to the order book. Um, and you so, say, for instance, on uh, New York Stock Exchange, you have to be what's called a designated market maker, uh, which is some like, you know, huge hedge fund uh, or, or like, you know, or like a trading firm just to have access to the order book. But when crypto came along, you know, people realized that you can, anyone can just take a computer and create an exchange. And so exchanges became more like pure tech platforms that had open APIs available to both makers uh, and takers. So basically for the first time, uh, you know, individuals like you and me, we, we could actually access an order book, place orders on there. And that, so that just opens up a whole range of trading strategies that weren't available to individuals before. So uh, in the, in the traditionally, uh, traditional strategies were, were primarily uh, what I would call directional strategies, where it's like you're trying to predict where the market goes um, and you have to basically you know, place a trade, you know, hope based on some indicator, hope that the market kind of goes to where you're predicting ha happens and then you sell to close out the trade. So um, that's inherently, you know, challenging because markets are unpredictable, plus you're paying fees. Um, so, so, but if you have access to the order book itself, now you can do uh, what's called maker type strategies. So uh, a maker strategy is one where you're basically placing a, a buy order down here and then a sell order up here. Uh, and so now, now the way you make money is if the market kind of just kind of like this kind of pops between your two levels, you're basically kind of getting filled, your orders getting filled and you're buying lower than you're selling. Um, and, um, uh, and so th th that's, and so it's kind of like a different type of style of trading instead of predicting where the market goes, you try to predict if the market will stay in this range. And actually you want to try to get filled, you know, at, at those levels. Um, but, but the, the, the other reason why market making in general, I think, uh, is, is, is better for, for just people generally is because you're, actually, you're also providing a service to the exchange or to the token project itself because the exchange needs liquidity in order to do their business. And the token project also benefits from liquidity because they compete with other tokens on the basis of liquidity. So typically either the token project or the exchange is, is willing to offer some incentive for, for market makers. So that incentive can be in the form of either a fee rebate, um, a what's called a liquidity mining reward or some other type of reward out there. Uh, so, so actually uh, one, of my, one, of the things, one of the businesses our parent company runs is this platform called Miner where people can run our tool, HummingBot, 
and earn rewards from different token projects who are trying to incentivize market makers. So that's why I would say from the beginning, we kind of focus on market making. So uh, that's from a, a, like a, a theory perspective, but from a technology perspective, what it means is that um, what Hummingbot tries to do is it establishes WebSocket connections to exchanges so that um, you can actually access the order book and see what's on the order book. Um, and um, we try to connect to lots of different exchanges uh, because one, one kind of thing you try to do as a market maker is uh, you, tr you always want to hedge um, your exposure. And so the more exchanges you have access to, the more you can kind of like, you know, provide liquidity on one venue, hedge on another venue and stay kind of um, market neutral. Um, so, so the, the, I think that, and I would say that the, the, the third aspect we're talking about is I think, um, we've, we've always tried to create a tool that is, um, like kind of, you know, where you don't have to be a developer to, to necessarily use it. Uh, so, uh, we have an interface that's kind of like, you know, it's built on the command line. So it's, it's like, it allows developers to run lots of different bots that they want to. However, um, if you're just an individual, you can use a user interface, uh, and kind of like, you know, use it as a tool without necessarily knowing how to trade or knowing know how to code. Now you don't need to know how to code, but I'm assuming as a developer, you can customize this and extend it to some extent, okay. add your own flavor rather than just writing these uh, or running these pre-canned uh, strategies. Yeah, that, that's right, absolutely. And actually I would say that that's actually the direction that we're kind of moving toward overall on the roadmap, because you know one thing we found is that you know the most successful members of the community over the past few years have been the people who are customizing their bots or creating their own strategies or doing something that's beyond just running the off the shelf ones. So uh, that's why we're starting a, um, a free developer bootcamp uh, called BotCamp uh, that teaches people how to create um, uh, scripts, which are this new component we introduced that just allows you to write pure Python. There's a few lines of code and you can just kind of like, you know, it's more like simpler versions of strategies, but it gives you more flexibility control. Hello. All right. Um... Yeah, why don't we go ahead and jump into a demo like of the basic okay. uh, market making strategy and then we'll just proceed from there and get more complex complex. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. So yeah. good. Let me uh, let me share my screen and let's go, let's do this. Right. Let me say hey people. So I'm just share my entire screen. Yeah, and then I will show that on the stream okay. and we will chill on the side. Okay. Uh, cool. so do you see my terminal window right now? Absolutely. Can everyone see that? Fine. I know it looks like a little bit small, but I, I, it's, I can read it pretty well. Okay. All right. So, so yeah. So if you want to make it bigger, just let me know. Um, okay. Cool. I've already expanded it uh, quite a lot. I, I do have a high res screen for some reason. So for one thing before I start, so um, Hummingbot, it's a it's a it's a command line app. Uh, there's various ways to install it. Uh, typically, people install either uh, the, the the Docker version or they install from source. Um, I've installed from stores because uh, I'm running kind of like our, our development branch. Uh, but the, the easiest way to install is probably just um, you know going basically installing the Docker version uh, where there's a there's an install script on our website. Uh, but if you did install from source, then um, typically you would kind of launch this with this bin slash hummingbot.py command. Um, so so in Hummingbot, we we have a we we ask you to set a local password, and the reason is because the password is used to encrypt uh, your your keys. So uh, your API keys and your, your, your wallet private keys you put into the app are, are basically encrypted with that password. Um, so uh, so a couple of things talking about, uh, yeah, so th th it's like a command line app kind of, kind of experience. Um, so we, we kind of like modeled it after like the old school you know, kind of text adventure games, like it'd be you know, for, the, for the older folks out there. Uh, but the way it's laid out is that uh, so on the left-hand side, this is like the output pane where the commands you type um, are are kind of like you know like a, this is the output. Uh, the lower part is where you input the commands. So uh, help gives you the list of all the different commands that you you can run, um, like uh, connect, which uh, kind of you know uh, connects to an exchange, create, which creates a, kind of create a, a new uh, bot, uh, import, which imports an existing bot uh, configuration. Uh, start, stop, uh, you know, and so forth. Um, the right-hand side is like a log pane. Uh, so uh, this is basically, it's kind of like a, uh, it just has like various like messages uh, related to the, what, your, what your bot's actually doing. Um, you can also kind of hide this if you want. There's an arrow here. Uh, apparently this arrow got 
lost in a recent version, but uh, it should have an arrow, but you can kind of click that to hide the log thing if you want. Um, and then there's also just some helpful information you know, up here, like um, you know, what strategy you're currently running, uh, the file you're logging into, uh, and whether this component called gateway, which I'll explain later on, um, you know, uh, if that's active or not, uh, and some, some information about your trading, your current trading session, uh, and some CP usage stuff. So, um, so yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, so so um, maybe Larry, should I try just create? create a strategy or should I? Um... Yeah, I think you have a default pure mar market making strategy that you might want to run. And I don't know if it's best for you to mm -hmm. run it in like a Binance paper trade mode or uh, or yeah. you're going to connect to an um, actual exchange. Like, yeah, let, why yeah. don't we just start with the default and then talk about maybe some of the, the settings involved to tweak that okay. default strategy. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. So, so uh, first of all, uh, let me just show you how you would connect to Hummingbot if you uh, were connected already. Uh, so th this is a test account. Uh, that I'm using. So I've already connected this one to a few exchanges already. Uh, so you can see that uh, this this is all the exchanges that we support currently. And um, and so this is like, you know, uh, whether I've added the keys for it. So I've added FTX uh, and KuCoin. KuCoin. Um, and then you can then you can kind of like see what your balance is with a balance command. Um, so the balances, the balance came out to show you your, um, your balances on each exchange that you're connected to. So you can see I have balances on FTX, um, KuCoin, uh, and then and then I also have uh, because I've also connected Hummingbot to a few um, if uh, a few decentralized exchanges. I also have kind of the balances for uh, my assets on Ethereum, uh, Mainnet, Covan, and on on Polygon as well. And and is this about the right amount you would say to get started with? Like if someone's just trying this for the first time. Yeah. Obviously, they don't put their life savings on it, but if they right. want to start out with a few hundred bucks. Is that enough to cover fees and kind of study the behavior? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. And, and, and actually, so we would actually recommend running everything in um, in paper trading mode or testnet initially, uh, just to kind of like get get, get started. Uh, which is kind of why we integrate a, a lot into um, in, into uh, kind of testnets and and, and uh, paper trading mode and so forth. So uh, currently, we offer four paper trading modes: I think KuCoin, Binance, Sendex, and Gate. Um, and then some of the perpetual exchanges also have test nets uh, there as well. So, um, but there's in terms of minimum amount, I would say uh, I actually don't think of there really is a minimum amount just because there's kind of like there's kind of like only there's like a long tail of exchanges where people are trading you know ten twenty dollars worth almost, and then there's other exchanges that people are trading you know like kind of like hundreds of thousands of dollars. You have to like trade hundred thousand to even kind of like compete with the, with the big boys. But to me, I feel like users should be able to select the market size given kind of like their own uh, kind of capital ratios. Excellent. Okay. Um, okay. So so let me go ahead and um, and create a, a strategy, a, a bot. So uh, the create command basically um, kind of like allows you to kind of like create a strategy. And, uh, and what it basically does, and this is all the strategies we support. So um, what, one thing to note is that all of these are kind of like uh, kind of like essentially community, community created and driven. So, um, so some of these are kind of like the ones that were created initially by our parent company, Coin Alpha. Some of these, like fixed grid, were submitted by members of the community. Um, but uh, overall, we try to have that's why that's what, kind of why we have this DAO model is to uh, create incentives and to allow people to vote for what exchanges Hummingbot should support, as well as what strategies uh, it should support. So pure market making is kind of the one that um, people uh, kind of like, you know, normally you know, follow. So this one here, because I do have, uh, I, I, normally what people would do is start with something like KuCoin paper trade uh, or Binance paper trade. Uh, because I do have real assets um, on here and because, you know, I always want to make sure we're showing people, you know, how, how it works with real, real assets if possible. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll use my, uh, I'll use the actual uh, the assets of KuCoin for this. So um, I think I have, let's see. Uh, yeah, so I think I, I, I have some, uh, a bit of DYDX here. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll do that, DYDX to USCT. So basically, this is basically the trading pair that uh, I will be creating um, uh, market making orders in and making market in. And is there a reason you chose uh, KuCoin or is that just uh, arbitrary right. At, on, right now? 
Yeah, yeah, but it's it's more because I have assets on KuCoin. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I have FTX as well, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, it's, KuCoin is 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 yeah, it's just uh, it's uh, it, yeah, it's it's pretty much arbitrary. It, I would say it kind of depends on which exchanges you know you have assets on. Um, Hummingbot supports pretty much all the exchanges uh, that are out there, so, so it kind of like depends on which ones you want to um, you personally have access to and which uh, you know, you have access on. Excellent. Let's do it. Okay. So, um, so, so the, the first question is how far away from the mid price do you want to place a first bid order? Uh, so this is basically saying, you know, um, if you look at the price on an order book, you know, how far below that do you want to kind of set your buy prices? So with spreads in market making, um, this is basically the spread. So in market making, the, the bigger the spread, the, the less risk you're kind of taking because it, it's, it's, um, it'll be harder for the price to move to where you are for, before you get to your trade. However, uh, you just won't you won't trade very often. So um, so it's kind of like it's kind of like there's like a, a risk reward kind of calculation you're making uh, when you set the spreads. Uh, but so so typically, if something that's like let's say pretty safe, it's something like zero point five percent. So I'll set zero point five just to start with, um, and and probably decrease that in, uh, you know to, to see uh, a few more trades. So. Um, so th this question is uh, like kind of the order refresh time. So I've said something kind of relatively fast just to show people, but uh, typically I think, you know, typically people use like 30 to 60 seconds. Um, no one DYDX, I think DYDX is something like about a dollar. So I think I'll, I'll say something like, um, so, you, so it, yeah, so I, I have like 250 over here. So I'll probably say something like maybe, you know, um, maybe, yeah, maybe like 20 uh, to start with. Um, and then, and then finally, uh, we, have a, we have a feature called ping pong. That's like a very basic risk management strategy. Uh, and all it does is uh, whenever you get a buy order filled, the next order is only going to place sell orders after that. And then when, when it's a sell order filled, it'll place buy orders only after that. And that's because um, I think as I said, alluded to in the very, you know, uh, market making, it's kind of like, a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a strategy that is, um, it's, it, it's, it's, it's really about your, your risk is really, about inventory risk. Uh, so it's very similar to the risk that a market maker you would face if you are providing liquidity to, let's say, Uniswap. If you're like a liquidity provider Uniswap, there's something called impermanent loss. Um, and you're facing the same risk as a market maker because you're providing liquidity. So the market, whenever it kind of moves in one direction, uh, you're always on the other side of that, of that, of that move. Um, so because of that, a lot of the, the art of market making is you know, finding ways to capture the, the the bounces in the market uh but uh but trying to hedge the risk of the market trending one direction and you're consistently kind of buying or selling on the other side of that so um so 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 that was just a a, a very basic market making bot we set up so um the config command in coming by will show you kind of like what the parameters are uh so basically uh, this just to recap um uh this this bot is going to Look at this market, uh, DYDX, USDT, and KuCoin, and it will basically place a, um, uh, uh, an, an orders of like 0.5% below the price, 0.5% above the price, and refresh those orders every uh, 15 seconds. So after that, you can just hit start to uh, start the bot, and uh, and you know, yeah, yeah. So now it will. So now it's um, basically. Uh, on the log pane, so it says that it's subscribed to the KuCoin order book, and it's created, uh, you know, basically two orders: one buy order, uh, and then one sell order. And then every 15 seconds, um, it's going to cancel the ones it's created, and then replace them with uh, basically recalculate what the mid price is, and re recalculate what the spreads are, and then re and re refresh the orders that you have uh, on the order book. So now, yeah, so we're, not, we're we're market making right now. Awesome. And then, so what are you looking for here? Like you're you're, you're watching it's placing orders, mm -hmm. canceling them, create them. Eventually, I assume some will get filled. Um, but how are you measuring your performance right. here in the right. status? Great question. So so um, so really, like the the question is, what is your goal here? And um, and so I think it's a market maker. There's really there's kind of two things you're looking for. So so sometimes. Um, you, you can't just try to make money on itself. So let's say to make money by itself, you probably have to tighten your spreads uh, because um, you know, right now we're not seeing any fills. So let's actually, let's do this. 
Um, let's do, uh, let's see, let's see. Let's tighten the spreads to 0 0.2. Oh, sorry. Let me, uh, okay. uh, I forgot how to use this one. Oh, yes. Okay, sorry. Uh, the spreads 0 0.2, 0 0.2. So so um, so now I've tightened my sprites, and hopefully we will we will get better, uh, you know, like a, you know, like more regular fills. But but to answer your question, so I would say, in, in, as a market maker, you could be trying to uh, kind of like get fills and buy and try to make sure your buy prices are 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 lower than your sell prices. Um, however. I think that the, the, the and, and so I think that if you're market making this way, um, that's actually quite hard to make money by doing this because um, it, it's, you have to be a very precise market maker. Um, and and it also depends on how liquid that, that current exchange is. So I do think you can make market, make money market making like this on some very small exchanges, but in the large ones, it's, it's, it's still quite hard today. So typically, uh, at least in our user base, a lot of people are making, um, the reason why people Run Hummingbot is um, yeah. Can I, if I share my I'll, I'll put my screen, um, they're they're running Hummingbot in order to provide liquidity to uh, a, this platform that um, our parent company runs called Miner, where they can get rewards uh, from different tokens for market making and running uh, Hummingbot like this. So uh, if you're running a kind of like a, a running a bot in a market like this, then um, Every minute, you get a small amount of reward allocated to your account if you have orders that are on the order book. So, because of that, you're basically getting paid for kind of like running orders, running a bot like this and placing orders. And so then there's like a some type of incentive to do so. Um, so, so basically, typically, typically in crypto, I think the kind of why this is another reason why we kind of focus on market making because uh, market making your you're always, you always provide like a service to um, to an exchange or to a token, and therefore there's some type of incentive, uh, whether it's a rebate uh, or a token reward or a liquidity mining reward that, that people are, are giving to. Um, and so, is there a, a certain like how do this, does uh, the overall market conditions affect like when you're running the bot? Are you looking for some certain things before you actually start uh, running the bot? Uh, because I assume more volatility yeah. affects things. Right, right. That. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so so I, I think this gets into what, what like it's kind of like what your strategy actually is as a market maker. Um, so uh, and it, it kind of like and, and really goes down to how and, and when you're market making, you can make money in different ways. So um, so for instance, one way you could make volatility, uh, being with volatility is if you just believe that the market is going to stay in this range for a long time, and so. Um, and so that way you can make money that way. But but typically as a market maker, um, you're you're looking to make money not just in this current market, but based on how this market is going to react versus some other market out there. So um, and that's that's kind of what Hummingbot is designed for. So for example, um, one way one way you can make a market is is using a um, a uh, is uh, using a uh, using a uh, a parameter called price source. So, uh, for example, if I do price, if I select a price source and I select a different market from the current one, let's say I, I select the, um, an external market besides KuCoin. Uh, so, I might uh, select, let's say, Binance, um, and and then so I might pick the UITT, the, the UIDX UTC trading pair on on Binance. Um, so, uh, uh, and then yes, that one. So, so now what I'm doing is I'm still making a market on KuCoin. Uh, I have to stop that and start again. But now I'm making a market on KuCoin using the order, using the price from Binance. Um, and so the reason you may want to do this is if, let's say, you're, um, you're, you're trading on a small, small exchange, but all the information related to this trading pair is on the most active, most liquid market. And now, now it's... Um, now, in, in theory, you have an edge here because you're you're kind of making a market based on the price of a of like a more liquid exchange. And if if the the current market you're on reacts more slowly to that other market, then um, you would kind of like you know you would actually buy and sell with, with the informational advantage versus that, that original market. I see. And and so um, if you notice. Um... I'm assuming some of these custom bot makers, so developers out there might 
distribute? I mean, do people share a lot of these strategies? I know it generates like a config yeah. YAML file and that's yeah. like static. So can you talk a little bit about how people uh, right. share strategies or what their incentive would be to do so? And yeah. also, yeah. Um, are there ways to dynamically adjust these uh, spreads to, based on uh, the market conditions? Like I noticed you're just typing in a command and just right. specifying these config values, but I assume most people want to just leave this running and not watch. And you probably want to watch this a little bit at the beginning, right? To figure out it's the bot's behavior. Um, but how do you go about automating this a bit more where you can build some right, confidence right. that you can keep this running without getting eaten up by fees and so forth? Yeah, that's right. So, so the way that people typically run this is that they they typically start uh, by running paper trading mode, uh, or or even they automate. They use um kind of like because this is also you can also run this in Docker mode. So uh, when people run this Docker mode, a lot of people are setting up uh, kind of like you know running like ten different ten different bots in paper trading mode, uh, running them for like a week, um, you know, seeing how they work, and then and then and then then kind of re then throwing real capital uh, into it. Um, or uh, uh, other people are um, once they've gotten once they kind of have a strategy that they like feel comfortable with, then they can they can kind of use automation to like you know like send all the trades to a single data external database and, and then and then kind of use that database to track it. So because Hummingbot, um, so the, the, this this is kind of like the the end user part of it, uh, but there's also a pretty um, kind of extensive developer uh, you know kind of like aspect because uh, all these all these configurations uh, you know. On a, for, on a per strategy, uh, per like this, this terminal uh, and, and, and Docker are kind of configurable by users. Um, so uh, I, I'm not sure. If you, I, I think I, we can't get into that, but it's, I think it's also like something that people can kind of find out more about. They just watch our YouTube videos and, and kind of go through the docs. For sure. Okay. Um, um, and so, do you want to expand upon one of the other strategies? I know you mentioned there's a cross yeah. cross exchange strategy. So. Yes. Yeah. What are some other approaches here? Yeah. Yeah. And actually, yeah, I, I think the, the, the cross exchange ones are, I, I would say, this is where I would say um, Hummingbot is really focused on. And also, this is also, I think, what, what market makers are really, you know, trying to kind of, this how, how the professional market makers really make money, you know, because, um, and what's happening in crypto now is that there's like so many exchanges and there's new ones every day. And so it's kind of kind of like, it's almost like for every new exchange that's being created, it's creating like arbitrage opportunities with that one and every other one that exists in the market. So, um, and because all these new ones kind of, they actually need that activity in order to demonstrate the volume, you know, and to generate the fees that they need to, you know, kind of like become sustainable. A lot of them are giving incentives out to like market makers and traders on those venues. So that's why I would say, I think that a lot of our users who are more consistent, they're, they're using a strategy or something like cross exchange market making. So I'll, I'll show how that works right now. Um, so, uh, so that was called cross exchange market making. Um, I'll, I'll use KuCoin again for this one. Um, uh, but instead of just market making for DYDX, uh, I'll, I'll basically market make for DYDX, but, but hedge um, uh, kind of like those trades on, on FTX. So let's see. So FTX. Oops. Also do any X. Um, um, and then and then I'll I'll set a, I'll set a pretty low minimum profitability just to try to get some more trades because uh, basically what this this is saying is that um, anytime the um, the actually I'll, I think I've said it like three zero point zero three. Um, and then uh, let's say it's the same similar as last time. Uh, but basically, basically what this is doing is um, uh, this is going to uh, kind of like basically make a market on on uh, DYDX on the on KuCoin. But then any time that you have a trade that's being filled, you you basically just kind of like you you hedge that exposure on FTX. Uh, so um, and, and and then the rest of these questions are just kind of like trying to make sure that the the if there is differences, like for instance with USD USDT here that um, you're either using some price feed to kind of convert it or you're setting the conversion ratios yourself. So for, for now, uh, I'll just say USD, USDT to, to be the same um, to, to, for simplicity's sake. sake. Um, and then finally, uh, you, can, you can also run this strategy on decentralized exchanges as well. So we have some questions that uh, kind of like, you know, account for, um, you know, kind of like decentralized exchange and so forth.
Um, so yeah, just reviewing the configs again. Uh, this one is this bot is uh, doing um, you know, cross exchange market making, making a market on KuCoin and hedging on uh, FTX. So, oh, actually, sorry, let me stop for one second. Uh, I, I swear, there is a um, there is a there's actually a I think there's actually a uh, uh, a uh, oops. There's actually a, a, um, a bug with this bot, actually, I think I, I found uh, here. I think I have to do this to do get to work. So that's, this should work, I believe. Okay, so so, so now what this is doing is um, it, it's still setting, it's doing the same thing as before, where it's basically making a market on KuCoin uh, like this. Um, however, it's, it's, it, it, the reason the spreads are tighter is because it's, it's saying, it's also watching this DYDX USAT market on FTX. Uh, and anytime it gets filled, it's going to um, kind of hedge the risk by doing the opposite trade on FTX. And because I've set this to a, um, a, a very low minimum profitability, um, you know, it, it's it's almost like it's basically almost like replicating the market from from KuCoin from FTX KuCoin, uh, and it should like it should actually trade like basically it should trade fairly often at this fairly low level as, if there are trades on on um, on on, on FTX. So it, it probably won't make much money, but it should be almost flat in terms of PNL. Okay. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so so uh, yeah. Uh, actually, let, let me let me make the uh, I'll, I'll even lower the profitability a, a bit lower uh, to try to see if we can get some trade going. But uh, because it, you're, because with market making, it's you know, it's kind of a you know you're kind of waiting for the market to actually. Trade. Yeah, I know it's hard to demonstrate so, something so like. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but uh, I, I was actually writing this before, and I, I did see some trades happen. Oh, there we go. Here, here's here, we got we got a couple of trades going. So. So, um, so good. Yeah, we, but we got uh, a couple of trades filled. So basically, what they're saying is, the, the maker order here was filled. So this was the order that was filled on KuCoin, um, and then and then and, and then um, and then the buy said, okay, I got filled on KuCoin. So let me uh, do a sell on FTX and hedge that exposure. So so the, the reason why the reason it's trading now is because now it's only basically. The you know, you're, 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 we're part of the top order right now on KuCoin, um, and we're hedging on FTX. So, so because but because it's hedging on FTX here, um, you can use the history command to see your, your history of trades. And so you can see we're, we're basically we're basically flat, um, you know, because we've we've done um, yeah, like kind of like uh, you know, you have, uh, three trades here, two sales, one buy, four trades here, you know, but in terms of equal amount. And so, um, but because the, yeah, the value hasn't really changed across the board. Here. So, so, um, so overall, and this is actually one reason why a lot of um, uh, a lot of exchanges and market makers actually run home by themselves because uh, they also need tools to do their provide liquidity for their uh, their markets as well. And so, a lot of times they're actually running this cross exchange market making strategy for home bot uh, in order to provide liquidity to one venue uh, while hedging on another venue. Cool. And then uh, you briefly mentioned uh, decentralized exchanges. So this works with uh, Uniswap and other yes. uh, non-centralized exchanges. Yeah. So how does that work? I just need to provide like a, a key and it knows yeah. how to connect in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. So uh, yeah, let, let me tell that, and I can I can show that um, show okay. uh, example of those strategies as well. So um, yeah. So the the way that um, uh, decentralized exchanges work is that we we recently introduced a a component called Gateway. Um, which uh, which basically uh, connects um, to decentralized exchanges, and because and the reason we did this is because most decentralized exchanges um, uh, their their code base is in Solidity uh, or in case of Solana it's like in Rust, um, and so a lot of them have some type of like JavaScript or TypeScript SDK that is needed to interact successfully with the exchange, like the Uniswap router SDK, for example. Uh, but you know, Hummingbot a Python code base. Uh, many quant trading firms are kind of like you know are, are, are also you know C plus or, or, or Python code bases. So um, we built Gateway as a standalone uh, module that kind of translates 
uh, any um, any DEX on any chain into a standardized set of like REST endpoints. Uh, and so the idea is that Hummingbot, we kind of consume those REST endpoints, this middleware, uh, but then uh, other people can also use Gateway on a standalone basis as well. Uh, so uh, I have a, I, I'm actually running from source, so I have a version of Gateway running here. So th this is uh, basically a TypeScript client uh, that's running, uh, kind of interacting with the blockchain, with like node providers, and kind of like, you know, in, basically like doing all the DEX interactions. Um, and then, um, and then, and then on Hummingbot over here, Hummingbot is the one that is kind of like interfacing with that uh, kind of middleware in order to kind of connect all the DEXs and um, and and kind of do so from a Python basis. Cool. So, um, so yeah, so so uh, that's how work type works. So basically, the way you would use it is basically kind of just say gateway connect, uh, and then we have, here are the the current DEXs we support. Uh, so let's say you want to connect. Uh, let's say, uh, say, say, sushi swap. Um, so, uh, say, sushi shop. We currently only support the Ethereum ones, but um, it, it does other chains as well. So, let's say, if you want to use sushi swap on mainnet, um, Ethereum, then, um, then yeah. So, ask for your like, kind of like which node providers you want to use, uh, and then which wallet you want to use. So, I've already added a wallet here. So, um, I'll just pick this wallet here. And now, uh, what you're doing is you're kind of saying um, you're, you're kind of binding that wallet to that exchange. Uh, and so now, uh, whenever you run a strategy on that on that on that wallet, you'll 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 use that um, you'll, you'll use that uh, you'll, you'll use that you, 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 when you run a, when you want to run a bot on that on that dex uh, on that dex on that chain on that network, you will then use that wallet. So, so that's how it works. And then, so yeah, let's create a strategy uh, using one of these decentralized exchanges. Uh, the one that we um, we typically create is called MMR. Um, MMR is basically uh, it, that's probably the, the simplest one that uh, that's out there. All it does is it watches between uh, a DEX and AMM DEX and then some other exchange. Uh, and if the price um, deviates, it'll try to buy lower on one of them and sell higher on another one. And will that automatically fail if it uh, is it guaranteed to be profitable when you run that trade? Um, yeah, or yeah, no? it's a great question. So no, no, it's not guaranteed to be profitable. So the way that um, like we think about bots is that it's going to automate something that for you. So uh, what I think that if you set the let's say the profitability to like uh, only do a trade when um, the profit when it's like let's say ten percent when you can make at least a ten percent profit then you know it's it's pretty much guaranteed to be profitable but it'll never trade so so i think um you know but if you set a a, a lower profitability rate ratio let's say uh, like only only trade when it's less than let's say um you know um 0.5 percent profitability um but so you might trade more often but then let's say if gas spikes or if let's say you know like uh, something happens where you you kind of miss miss like miss one of your arbitrage legs uh, then you know, then then you can kind of like then, then it might not be profitable. So so I think a lot of this a lot of this like it's kind of like how you configure the bots determines um, you know like like kind of like your the trade off between profitability and doing like you know very few trades versus um, kind of like you know maybe like a, you're not winning as much on every single trade but uh, you're you're kind of doing consistently. So the uh, sorry, it's, it's a long way of basically saying, I think that the, the people who are most successful with boss, are, I think the ones who are, I think using our tool to like kind of, you know, kind of like not spend so much time connecting exchanges, but they're spending more, more of their time on kind of like tuning the strategies, uh, paper, paper trading them and kind of like, you know, getting to a point where they're actually kind of like, you know, prop, like generating consistent profits. Um, but uh, like what, what we found is I think, the, the folks who are doing this the best are not the ones it's more because they've they figured out something where it's like there's some trading pair that's no one's really looking at and there's consistent arbitrage opportunities between you know in, in that one in that one token on some small exchange versus some other some other like small exchange um so so i, I feel like it's really those people who found something that basically no one else is looking at and and now they can just you know run a bot and pick up uh those those automatically Awesome. And so can we walk through just a test example? I know. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, you can so, just make up a Yeah, so yeah, yeah, so I'll, 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 I'll use one um I'm actually going to use um kind of like Or you a, could also reference an old I know there's 
have been opportunities in the past that yeah. maybe used yeah. to be successful that are no longer successful. And if you want yeah. to mention any of those, yeah. that might help illustrate the point. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, actually, well, one one point would be um, so we actually just had a user uh, recently on our Discord uh, talk about how he found opportunities um, on between um, between uh, DEXs on Polygon and um, and other central exchanges. So uh, so so um, actually, uh, I'll, I'll show this uh, maybe just. Uh, what I mean here. So, so, so the, the way that we, we kind of like, uh, we, we, it, it works is that like, um, so let's say you want to connect, let's say Uniswap. Um, so you can connect Uniswap on different chains. So we, we've currently support uh, Ethereum and Polygon. So let's say you want to support Polygon um, and then let's say your mainnet. Um, and, and so, yes, uh, and then yes, okay. Uh, so, so basically, now uh, I'm basically connecting to um, to 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 Uniswap Polygon, and, and so what that means is um, I can trade between Uniswap Polygon uh, or any other market out there. So um, uh, we had a user on Discord say about uh, at least a couple weeks ago that he found a bunch of opportunities between Uniswap Polygon and some other smaller central exchange. Now he didn't tell us what other central exchange uh, you know it is, but uh, but you know. I, I think that th those are the kind of opportunities that people are, are finding out there. And, and the reason is because, you know, like, like the, I think that if you're, the trading, the, the, the big trading pairs like ETH, USCC, uh, or, or any of the, like, or like, you know, like, you know, like die, uh, ETH die, the, the large ones have a lot of, you know, attention from big market makers because they have like capacity, but there's kind of like a long tail of, of trading pairs, um, you know, especially on you know, like the, the, the you know the, the non the non mainnet networks like Polygon, uh, that just there aren't many arbitrageurs looking at, uh, and and so uh, and so it's kind of like in, and there's between that and like other small central exchanges, there's always kind of like ways that you can you know arbitrage those things. So so the, the, those are the kind of opportunities I would actually be looking for uh, if I were a user. So, so yeah, let's go ahead and actually run um, this this strategy, so I can I can show people how it works. So I'm actually going to use a, a testnet, uh, so that because testnets like they have like weird trades, so it's easier to trigger uh, something. So let's do something like uh, what die on on Coban, um, and, and then and part of that configuration you configured it to connect to an Ethereum wallet. Is that what you're doing here? Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah, wallet. So, okay, exactly. Yeah. So um, in this connect step. Um, Basically, um, I I had an existing wallet I had imported earlier, um, mm -hmm. but uh, if I didn't have one, this step would um, ask me for a private key for a new wallet, um, and, and then it would basically take that private key, encrypt it using the password that you set initially for Hummingbot, and then make that wallet available uh, to, to to you. So so the, the way we think about it is that adding up. Adding a private key, we handle private keys in the same ways we handle API keys, uh, and then they're like secrets that are encrypted, uh, and then you know, kind of like only used uh, by the client when it's trading. Cool. So, um, so in this one, uh, uh, just to kind of show an example, I'll paper trade um, connector use Binance this time, uh, and then I'll so basically um, uh, because. Uh, the, the the trading pair on Uniswap was with Dai. I'll do ETH USDT um, here, uh, so that basically the the WETH matches the ETH and the Dai matches USDT, um, and uh, and then yeah, just maybe something like zero point one uh, WETH per order, um, and uh, and uh, yeah, something like yeah, maybe uh, yeah, one percent profit. Um, th there's some other questions that are more configuration related. Uh, but but the, the basic idea is that um, as long as it's 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 more than one percent profitable to do you know to buy on one exchange and sell on another exchange, the bot's gonna uh, try to do that. So then yeah, then afterward it's uh, uh, let's see, yes, no. uh, this mother just steps to just confirm you know what you're trying to do, and then now it's gonna. Try to connect to the the Binance API uh, in, in, in paper trading mode, uh, and then basically try to make a market in this uh, in this one right here. So, so let's see. Uh, and, and I did this because uh, this should actually yes, it, because because it's uh, it's paper trading. It's you know it's 
um, the, the markets in Covan are are always um, interesting. So sorry, I don't know why, why the status command is not working. Um, yeah, yeah, the status command should be showing the the actual. Oh, there it goes. The, the actual markets, but uh, basically because because it's it's on testnet, um, you know, the the markets in Covan are are completely off. So that's why you see these like you know <laughs> these ridiculous rates here. If I was just in mainnet, uh, we wouldn't be seeing this. Uh, but because it, it's it thinks that it's it's highly profitable to sell uh, Covan ETH and and buy you know buy on this paper trading market, it's gonna it's gonna do a bunch of these trades. Um, but uh, but so so th th this is how it would work if there was a real arbitrage opportunity on on Ethereum mainnet and you were trading a mainnet, uh, then you would it would basically try to automate. Uh, a series of arbitrage transactions uh, whenever it finds them. Okay. And and um, someone was asking about uh, latency earlier, and I don't know if you're ready to jump into that, but I was curious. Okay. So so we've demonstrated a few uh, examples of how to create bots with a humming bot mm -hmm. and some configuration settings. So let's say we've settled on a certain uh, con set of configurations. So how do, would we go about... Uh, running this 24 seven. I assume most people aren't yeah. running this on a laptop. Do you want to yeah. right. go to AWS or some other yeah. server? And does that, uh, how yeah. does that affect uh, your strategy? Yeah, yeah it's a good question. So, so yeah, so when typically people, when, yeah, typically people are kind of, yeah, kind of demoing this on their laptops, uh, just to test it out or running paper trading, uh, but they want to productionize it, typically running Helling by, uh, on, on Amazon or, or JCP or some, or somewhere in the cloud. Uh, so to do that, they're typically running the, the Docker version. Uh, so we we have um, on, on our on our, um, on our on our doc site here, uh, we have installation options for for Docker and like some 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 pages to run it, describe how to run it in the cloud. Um, but basically, uh, this is how people people are typically running like multiple you know Docker versions instances on a single um, like you know a digital ocean or, or AWS uh, you know uh, server. Uh, but but answer the question about latency. I think I think that that's more of a. Uh, what we found is that um, because most crypto exchanges are, uh, they have servers that are in the cloud, plus um, plus uh, it, it's kind of like the, the, the on on the on the deck on the decentralized exchanges the the latency the blockchain and the block time is kind of the ultimate latency. Um, it, it it almost doesn't matter on your side, uh, kind of like you know how much latency you're incurring. Uh, so, it, it, uh, I think this is. Um, I think that people have a misconception in some ways that uh, you know it, because from traditional finance, like it, you can't really compete unless you're like you know you're running some type of you know co-location or something like that. That um, you know you, you have to be like kind of the fastest out there. Um, so uh, speed is important, uh, which is why you know like we try to kind of automate everything with Helene Bot. But but typically, um, I think the opportunities are are really kind of like in the in, in the long tail, so to speak. And in the long tail, um, you, you're not trying to compete on being the fastest. You're kind of trying to compete on kind of like kind of being the having most information and having a strategy that's you know providing you know liquidity over here and hedging over here or arbitraging between uh, two different places. So so but but typically, what we found is like as long as that you're you're you know as long as you're, you're trying because you're sending. Um, trades or transactions to another, you know, cloud-based server somewhere else where the exchange is, uh, and a lot of time you, you don't really know where, where that exchange actually is located. Uh, it's hard to actually optimize for latency in, in the crypto world. Awesome, um, and yeah, I think it might be a good time to pause for if there's any uh, audience questions. So, do you have anything else you want to demonstrate uh, before we do that? Um, yeah, yeah. Maybe one final thing yeah, is uh, so. Yeah. yeah. So, so just one final thing. And this is kind of like maybe um, this is kind of the direction we're heading toward. Is like okay. I would say we when we first started, we had a bunch of these like fixed strategies, like you know, like the ones I created showed you, like, like pure market making, uh, product exchange market making. But you know, one thing we found is that the folks who've had the most success with Hollingbot have been the ones that have kind of customized and created uh, their own strategies. You know, because um, you know, then they can kind of add their own, you know, intuition, their own kind of like, you know, like, like, like thought process into it, and it just become something they can you know, really, really into it and build. So that's why we've recently started to like create um, what's called script strategies. So scripts are basically um, like pretty simple, you know, example strategies. Uh, for instance, like here's one that uh, kind of like this one all it does is just like 
ping a few exchanges. Oh, yeah, so this is actually active, so this is it's fine. So um, this, is, this, uh, this format uh, status example just kind of like connects to three exchanges, uh, Gate, KuCoin, and Binance. Uh, and then and it just kind of like allows you to uh, kind of format the status of it. So sorry, actually, so I need to actually exit this. <laughs> it's still kind of a bit confused for my, um, the one I was running earlier. Uh, but uh, let me just go through that script example one more time. And is this script, uh, does this come with Hummingbot or did you get these from a GitHub repository? Um, yeah, they're located in our GitHub repository. So we have a bunch of, uh, this is a pretty new component for us because uh, scripts are pure Python. Uh, so I'll show, I'll show this one here. Um, so uh, it's, uh, uh, this one here is, it's, it's and, it, and it's Hummingbot, Hummingbot's not pure Python, is it? Or uh, is it all? Yeah, yeah um, hum, some of Hummingbot's in Cython. So uh, oh. Cython, which it's, it kind of makes it um, a little bit faster for, for, for lazy purposes. So because our strategies previously were all in um, in, in Cython, it, it made it hard for people to really uh, kind of edit them and, and really understand what they're doing. Uh, plus, you know, like, um, you know, w w with, with, with a script like this, like you kind of want to actually edit, you know, edit in real time. Uh, so for example, um, this format status example script is, uh, is here. Uh, it's just a few lines of code. So this is basically the entire, the entire script itself. Uh, it's basically fetching um, the, the 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 like the order book from Binance, KuCoin, and Gate.io, and allows you to run a status function uh, that that shows um, kind of like you know, the status of that order book. Um, so what we're doing with these scripts are are like kind of like giving people um, access to the full power of all the different exchange integrations that we might have, but create a more like easier entry point for people to actually define the logic of how a bot actually operates. Um, so another one that I can show, uh, this one's probably a bit more complex is, uh, let's see, here's one that, um, you know, here's one that uh, does a simple VWAP. Um, so a VWAP is something that just basically uh, like goes into the market and buys, uh, uh, it buys and sells at a certain price. Um, so. So basically, this one is kind of just going to the, the Binance paper trade market, um, and it's it's going to buy, uh, you know, like this much, uh, this much, you know, kind of like you know, uh, this, this this much assets uh, with a spread of this much, and it'll, it'll kind of like basically submit orders uh, only based on how much volume is on the order book. So if there's too much volume, it's not gonna it's gonna keep those orders as a as a percentage of those volume. So so the, the, this this seems this is this this one's a bit more complicated. Uh, because it is kind of creating orders and, and placing orders, um, but it's still, I would say, uh, it, it's still fairly simple in terms of, I guess, um, you know, kind of like allowing someone to understand uh, exactly what's going, how, what, 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 what logic that the bot's actually doing. Um, and so, if we run that one, uh, let's see. First. Um, and so the the structure of this, everyone that wants to write one of these scripts, they just need to extend some based base script strategy class, sure. right? And then override right. a few methods, and then right. you just specify which exchanges to connect to. Um, right. And then how do you? Um, you mentioned you have custom connectors, so you're not using like CCXT or something like that to, right. to place trades. And, and also, you you look at the VWAP. Did you actually? Are you using some library for it for calculating that, or is that just all built into the? Yeah, code yeah, 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 it's all built in actually. Um, so okay. basically, the, 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 this is kind of the like a yeah. We have our own connectors. Um, so we, we actually might partner with CCXT and build a CCXT connector in the future once they've uh, once they've open sourced their WebSockets. Um, but because when we first started, uh, they, they had an open source WebSocket yet. And so we we had to kind of build our own connectors to different exchanges in order to support WebSocket, which basically you basically need that for market making purposes. Um, and then so so recently we kind of we're trying to kind of like kind of like more um, basically expose more of the framework to people, which is kind of why we created the scripts feature, uh, so that people can more easily you know just create like Python like code like this, uh, run it, uh, and also I would say like because if you're running this pretty locally. You can actually just edit it uh, live and and run it. So, like for instance, like like uh, if, if I um if I, if I go into my code editor 
I can change some aspects of the script locally, you know, like, like change some aspects, start it again. Um, and it will kind of like actually, you know, kind of, kind of run that script. So, uh, so to answer your further question, early question, yeah, the, the idea is that uh, we're just getting started with the scripts kind of like feature, but the idea is that over time we're, um, we're creating lots of different examples like this, uh, you know, extending for the people can extend uh, and kind of use them to, you know, really build their own custom strategies instead of just relying upon the ones that uh, have much ships with. Awesome. And, and um, so as I understand it, I guess we can go ahead and mention that now since you mentioned uh, developing scripts. As I understand it, you have a, a bot camp that is coming up where people can learn more about this? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, because, you have, uh, because we feel like you know, the, the, the folks who are most successful are really the ones who are customizing their, their Hummingbot strategies. So we want to increase the number of people who can do that. So we're starting um, a free dev boot camp. Uh, starting September first, um, and uh, the, the link is. Um, let's see, I'll, I'll maybe maybe if you don't mind, you share the link. And, yeah, uh, totally. I'll put that in the chat as well. So it's uh, it's hummingbot.thinkific.com where people can sign up. Um, so it, it's it's free for now. We might charge for this later on, but we just want to try to make sure it's adding value today. So the first batch is free, um, and people are going to basically learn how to write, um, you know, scripts using Hummingbot that allow them to build any type of trading strategy. Um, and then and so we'll, we'll give us certificates uh, to the folks who actually su successfully complete this court and, and create a script. And we'll also throw in some HBOT uh, rewards as well for the best ones. Um, so, and, and also the idea is that anyone who joins boot bootcamps, submits scripts, uh, the best ones are going to go into this wiki um, and, uh, and then and they will kind of generate more examples for people to use uh, in every release of Hummingbot. Um, and is there any specific background or anything people need to know before they, they join this to gain the most yeah, value? Yeah, great question, actually. Yeah, so we think that um, I think that uh, we think that you probably need some 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 simple Python uh, knowledge in order to get the most out of it. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, I think that if you it, it, uh, the, the test would be I think if you can, if you go to the Tellingbot scripts directory um, and you pick let's say a simple one, uh, if you can kind of follow along and and understand, you know. Basically, what this code is doing, uh, then I think that you'll be a good candidate to uh, to 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 to, participate, to take part. Awesome, um, cool. We have a few questions from the audience, if if you don't mind uh, sure. discussing these. I know uh, Federico in here is answering some of them as well. Oh, okay. uh, there's a question on: Are you considering adding more exotic automated market makers, pseudo swap, and Seaport? Do you know? I don't yeah. know what the latest here is. So yeah. 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 What do you? What all are you adding support right. for? Like, what's on the development roadmap? Yeah. So, so um, I think one one of the uh, so, so we recently transitioned to being a DAO. So uh, in 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 the, in the when we first started, it was you know, it was our parent company, Coin Alpha, was the one that maintained the code base. Um, but as we started adding more exchanges and strategies, we just we realized that it just wouldn't scale. It wouldn't be able to kind of accommodate the needs of the open source community. So uh, we, we put it into a DAO issue a token that allows people to govern what happens. And so um, so on the roadmap, we're trying to kind of really let that be driven by the community. So we have a weekly uh, community call uh, where we ask people like, you know, what, what direction do you want to take the code base in? Um, recently, it seems like there's two large areas where people want to expand into. Uh, the first is, um, you know, the, the first is or orchestration. So how do, how do people, some people are trying to run like a, a hundred different bots and control them and and trying to you know like really automate the process of managing lots of different bots. Uh, so uh, we're we're starting a project and kind of getting community members uh, who've already modified Hummingbot to a lot of extent and getting them to build this orchestration layer that they can people can basically uh, write Hummingbot uh, with. Uh, so uh, that project we're we're about to kind of launch a, a bounty for that uh, pretty soon and start that project off. Um, uh, then the other area we're kind of like kind of expanding to is um, connectors to different decentralized exchange ecosystems. Um, uh, so our gateway component, um, you know, it's, it's pretty new, but uh, it can, uh, it can kind of like, you know, connect to lots, it can, it's focused on Ethereum based exchange right now, uh, like, like Ethereum, Polygon, Avalanche, and so forth. Uh, but we have a team that's working on uh, integrations to Solana uh, right now. Um, and uh, that, uh, that should be in the code base in the next, probably the next release. And so we think that'll open up a lot of strategies because Solana has a lot of, um, trading focused uh, kind of like exchanges like Serum, Mango and other ones. 
uh, I think that will open up a lot of kind of like cross exchange or opportunities for the user base. Awesome. Um, and then Anthony here has a question. Is there a way to trigger the bot from a sig signal? So an external signal. I think I saw something about some trading view connector or yeah, something like yeah. that. So can you talk about yeah, uh, yeah. getting information from the, the outside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th th that's a great question. Actually, actually, th this is aligned with that orchestration project I mentioned. Uh, yeah. So there is uh, one of our community members. Um, his name is uh, the, the Holy Roger. Uh, he's forked coming by and he's created this, um, this interface that allows you to send signals from TradingView. Uh, into Hummingbot already. So that's already live on a fork that he's kind of running. Uh, but then we're, we're going to have him and another community member of ours um, you know, uh, work together. Uh, this other community members have built this orchestration interface. So because we think that orchestration and the ability to kind of like take external signals is they're very complementary kind of areas. So we don't want to have two separate solutions. Uh, we'd rather have one unified one, uh, which is why uh, we're, we actually, we're actually kind of like, we, we've been discussing this on weekly dev calls for the last few weeks. And so now we're finally ready to, you know, kind of just define an architecture and have these two community members, um, uh, basically, you know, work together on building something that can, you know, um, orchestrate lots of bots and accept signals, you know, from external data sources into the bots. Awesome. Uh, Nolan has a question, how transactions are submitted to the EVM. Yeah. Can you, can you okay. talk about that? Great. Yeah, great question. So so one thing we find is that, and this is actually because uh, I, I actually talked a lot with Alex from Flashbots early on about this, is that um, Hummingbot tends to focus on, I guess, what we call like cross-domain MEV. So like, you know, arbitrage opportunities exist not on one blockchain, but let's say between a blockchain and another blockchain or between a blockchain and a centralized exchange. So so because of that, we we tend not to spend too much time on on like actually getting transactions, you know, like like making sure that they're mined, and, and, and we, we, basically we, we don't focus on the single domain, uh, like the, the the flashbots use case, so to speak. Um, uh, so for, because of that, we we kind of like Hema kind of ends at the point when the transaction is submitted to the RPC endpoint. So we essentially for every single chain and network, uh, we allow the user to define an RPC URL, um, and then. And then it's almost like MetaMask. And then, um, and then we assume that whatever RPC URL you find, which actually could be Flashbots, uh, your transaction just sent to that to that endpoint. So, um, but but uh, to, what, what I was saying earlier, that's kind of why um, I would say, like, if you want to do like kind of flash loans and single single domain kind of arbitrage, um, you probably shouldn't be using a Hummingbot. Uh, but if you're trying to do uh, like between sex and dex arbitrage. Or something where you're, you're like, it's not about like, you know, it, it's yeah, you, you care more about like kind of a, the difference between two different domains than having bots more uh, with tool for that. Cool. Um, and then one more question on using Hummingbot to stream trading pair prices from a DEX or exchange. Yeah. I don't know if you mean just show them on the screen or capture them to a database. Probably capture, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we have had people modify Hummingbot to be able to do this um, because. We do have, I would say, I would say it, from a DEX, it probably doesn't make sense because for us, like, we don't really connect to DEX, with, well, I guess it, to like it, you know, some so forth. But from our, um, for, uh, for central exchange connectors, because we, we do maintain website connections to different exchanges, people have modified Hummingbot to, you know, just take those connections and instead of, you know, instead of just trading, sending a trade, every, sending an order every second, you know, just get the order book and save it to some, you know, database every second. Um, it's not something that we, we haven't focused on that use case ourselves. Uh, but let's say if, if someone out there wants to build a data collection strategy for Hummingbot, uh, I'm sure there'll be users of the community who would support that and, and who would, yeah, probably allocate some, uh, some bounties for it. Uh, great. And there, there's a question earlier on about just learning more about market making in general. I know I watched some of your previous videos and yeah. there were some references to specific, more academic papers to understand. I think it was right. this Avril. Avellaneda, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Market yeah, Main, yeah. that paper, um, that just kind of goes into some of the math behind it and just learning right. more about these strategies. So do you have any uh, yeah, there um, are, like things people right, should right. read? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so so um, a couple of tips. I, I think that, um, so the, uh, the, 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 the co-author to the Avellaneda paper uh, uh, is a guy named Sasha Stoikoff. Uh, he's, he's very prolific, uh, to, even today, on YouTube. Um, so uh, I would Google Stoikov uh, and YouTube, and he has, he has lots of videos that are like 
you know, on very kind of like minute aspects of, of market making and, and micro price and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's one really good resource. Um, I think another one, the, the, there's actually a, uh, yeah, there's actually a very little information about market making out there, uh, which is, you know, weird because it's, it's not, it's, it's a, it's, you know, it's something that is very important for financial markets, but because it's something that uh, I think, yeah, a lot of people just haven't really known about. Um, I think that another one I would, I would, uh, I would look at is, um, uh, I, I would say there's actually a lot of information about market making in kind of like in the FX world. So like, uh, in like the, like the, kind of like the, if you, like uh, FX brokers and, and those kind of things. Uh, but I think a lot of this stuff is still applicable uh, to crypto. Uh, but uh, a lot of what we found in market making is um, because there's very little academic, like a lot, like um, even academically, like the Alvinana paper, which is considered a seminal paper in the space, it, w it was only published like 15 years ago. So um, I think there's um, the, the, I would say it's still an area of a pretty, you know, pretty, nascent academic research at this point. Uh, so, so I think that um, the, the papers are probably the best places to start. Uh, so, so I think that, um, yeah, the, uh, I think the main authors in, in, in market making world on, on, the, on the traditional side are like the Alba Nada, uh, who sadly actually recently passed away, uh, Stoikov, as I mentioned earlier, and this other guy named um, Oliver Gwent. So G-U-E-A-N-T uh, is the other guy. Um, and then if you're interested in kind of market making on the, on the decentralized side, um, uh, Tarun Chitra from Gauntlet and Alex Evans have posted a number of like really fascinating articles about uh, like how different AMMs work and, you know, like the difference between AMMs and, and, and order books. Um, uh, for example, I think uh, I think there was one paper published, like, like I think about six months ago, that talked about how because of how like blockchains are susceptible to uh, like um it's like outages you have outages where the blockchain just doesn't like, you know there's some finite risk there's some risk the blockchain won't be available for some unknown period of time because of that like um the the the, the uniswap like the original uniswap design was really good handling that because it's like if a market like disappeared for a while and kind of came back at any point where the price moved to um the 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 the, the, the uniswap v2 style amm it still worked right uh, because of just two pools of assets. However, uh, if you had an order book model, like let's say an order book exchange, um, you know, because if the price moved, now the entire order book is stale. And now you have to like, kind of like, you know, every market maker has to refresh your orders. It's gonna cause congestion on the chain and so forth. Uh, it's kind of like why like the order book model is almost like incompatible with blockchains versus like, you know, kind of like uh, 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 other, other models. So, so, so yeah, I think that to me, a lot of market making is uh, yeah, kind of like the, 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 the academic part of it, which is understanding like, you know, from a mathematical standpoint, how do you respond to volatility? Uh, how do you kind of like, you know, adjust your inventory, given your inventory position, that's a theoretical part of it. Um, but then I think the practical part of it is, it's almost like um, a lot of market making is exploiting the differences in uh, the exchange landscape. So a lot of it is understanding if some, some new exchange model comes online. Let's say it's like, um, you know, let's say taking a recent example, let's say like, let's say you, you, really, you understand really well how um, the new pseudoswap exchange works. So the, the one that's where you can trade like, you know, like bundles of NFTs, you know, versus each other. So, so it's like, if you figure that out and you figure out how OpenSea works, you know, maybe you can figure out a strategy that's like, Doing something on pseudoswap and, and hedging your risk on open C in some ways. And so and that I think are the kinds of kinds of strategies that market makers look for because they're taking advantage of some inefficiency in the market. Um, and and they can you know run that trade for maybe one month, maybe three months until other people discover it. Uh, and then they have to find some new avenue uh, to, to pursue. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think this has been a great overview. We've gone like an hour and 15 okay. minutes. So I think that's that's pretty good. And I think you've given a great uh, walkthrough of the built-in strategies. And so, yeah, why don't we just talk, let's just wrap up here and just talk about where people, people that are interested, how can they learn more? How should they proceed from here now that they have some understanding of HummingBot? Uh, when's the bot mm -hmm. camp again, just to remind everyone. And I'll also link a variety of these papers and authors that you mentioned so that people don't have to dig okay. through the okay. video to find it. So I'll link a few things down below. Um, so yeah, do you just want to mention anything that's coming up for people to learn yeah. more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
I think the main thing we're talking about is, um, yeah, if you go to our website, uh, we have a number of like tutorials uh, and things like that to show you how to get started. Uh, but uh, the main thing that we're, we're trying to show right now is uh, our bot camp, uh, which we're going to have like monthly batches uh, starting uh, with the first one in September. Uh, and the basic idea is that it's a it's a boot camp that teaches you how to build trading bots. Um, and uh, and because we think that you know it's 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 really um, yeah the, the the people who to make money you can't just run the off the shelf ones you have to kind of add your own you know, um, you know intuition and flavor into it. Uh, and uh, I think yeah the, the the because a bot is actually just a, a program. It's a program that automates something uh, across different crypto exchanges. I think being able to be some write your own programs. Is, is the best way to actually be successful. So that's why we're trying to, you know, grow a global community of, of bot runners and uh, we're gonna teach you how. Awesome, and that's September 1st, is that Friday or Saturday? I can't, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think the first, it starts, so the, the way it works is um, we'll have a couple of live sessions where we'll kind of like walk through examples and teach you how to uh, write a bot. Okay. And then, but in order to complete the, the course, and to get your certificate, you basically have to write your own script. Um, and so, and we'll have like people on our Discord, you know, kind of mentors helping people, you know, like write their scripts. But but the, the, for the for the people who complete the course, they write a working script. Uh, then those are the ones that get a certificate um, and uh, and and some HR rewards. And then, then we'll also for for the best ones, we'll also add their script to the open source code base and use by examples for uh, future sessions. Awesome. Well, I'll be in there. And so my, I'm actually working through part of it. I think you had some free uh -huh. document or something. So okay. I'll definitely go through it and share, you know, I'll make a video and share something I learned as well on here. So it'll be a good experience. Um, Maybe. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Uh, actually, I, I would too, actually. And also, I, also, I, also, I, also Discord, I know you didn't mention it, but there's a Discord yeah. for Hummingbot. I'm hanging out in there just kind of okay. seeing what's going on. So lots of chat in there if people want to learn more. So yeah, awesome. highly recommend it. Next. Yeah, cool. uh, 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 I will also join the first batch of bot camp as well because, like, for me, yeah, I, 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 I'm not quite an engineer either. You know, I'm I'm, a, I'm more of a product guy, so I, I've always wanted to build my own bots too. So yeah, uh, yeah that, that's kind of why we're doing this. So I also try to create some weird, <laughs> some weird trading script as well uh, in, in that first batch. Badass, cool. All right, well, thank you for your time and just sharing your unique background and such a cool project. I look forward to playing around with it more. I've actually started playing with it a little bit and I'm looking forward to going further. So thanks, thanks a lot for coming on and chatting with everybody. And thanks Thank a lot you. for everyone that attended and, and hung out with us today. So uh, stay tuned next Saturday, there'll be the team from Deep Haven. They have like a real time uh, streaming analytics platform. They're more in traditional finance, working on high frequency trading and things like that. So people have been asking about that as well. So I'm trying to get more uh, experts from their various fields on to do these live streams and fill in some of these gaps. So cool. All right. Thanks a lot. See you next time. All right. Bye-bye.